Hey everybody, it is Cinnamon Coney, your Archer Butt, and today we're going to have such a fun time together. It's a much lighter painting today. We're going to do a red Christmas ornament with a little bit of snow having just fallen on it on a pine bough. Beautiful gold lights twinkling in the background. We're going to do this in acrylic paint, and I'm going to show you all the techniques you need to do to create a painting that looks like this, which is kind of super fun and awesome. I explain a thing. You do the thing, explain the thing, you do the thing, and together at the end we have a fabulous fun painting. Now on the mic is my husband John. Hello. We are a two person team and we are because it, well there's just cameras and equipment and everything here. John turns everything on but he also does some um, other important stuff. He makes sure the camera is pointing at what I'm painting and zoomed in when it needs to be zoomed in. That you can see the palette, that you can see everything, everything works and he kind of is a liaison between me and the community reading comments and questions because these are live shows. You might be here on the replay but we do these live um and so having a co-host super super helpful now let's go over the materials for today's the, fun class and again material. this is going to be chill it's going to be one of the three uh, three power hour deep dive classes this is a fun two hoot which is like well i painted a little bit but you know i'm i'm ready for some i could do an hour and a half painting kind mm -hmm. of a thing so you're doing good 11 by 14 on the surface i think i need to move that over a little bit to the right don't i oops that was my fault sorry oh no no no, it's okay it it's 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 such a nominal thing all right so 11 by 14 canvas i like art alternatives um i i like the classic cotton the best i do sell it at my store but you can get them elsewhere so don't feel like you can't price shop or be a good consumer or all that i want you to be a good consumer I've got the colors cad yellow, cad red medium, ultramarine blue, quinacridone magenta, mars black, thalo green, dox purple, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, titanium white. I probably will use some satin glazing liquid. This is a medium that slows down the drying time of my paint, improves blendability, and allows me to do transparent glazes all in one product. It runs about $10 to $13 a bottle where you find it. Sometimes you can get it on like a steal on 40% off when they run a sale. Um, and it lasts a good six months. So what I would say is if you've had any trouble with your paint not blending, it might be a good investment. Um, over the paint, got my cup of water, my assorted brushes. John? They think you look beautiful today. Do it for me. Everyone says you look so I think you I look beautiful. I feel, I, f I feel very touched by that. Thank you. Let's see if I can get my... We're going to do a step one. We're going to like the step. I've got my coffee You're today. i got my sippy sip. To the graveyard girl from old YouTube. Sippy sippy bunny. Bunny got me into the sippy sippy. All right. Let us paint a ground. And you know what ground I'm going to do? A ground is a solid color. Um, and it coats the whole canvas. It can be streaky, it can be thin, it can be a lot of things. But what it does is make everything gold. And you can buy canvases pre-painted a color. So if you didn't like this stage, you do it. I'm going to do it a weird way. You don't need to do it this way. You can just brush it on like regular. But I'm going to, I like to make sometimes little. Little draw little paint things out here and then paint them around i have no idea why i do this it's just this thing i started to do and there, there's a part of me that's fascinated if i can guess it correctly i think like where i'm like oh i've guessed the right amount of paint so i just squeeze that directly from the tube on the canvas yellow ochre and now i'm going to take a large brush with a little water on it and spread it out and i may even mist out some water and what i mean by that is i have a sprayer here with water in it i like to mist my palette my wet palette even in my canvas and that will improve the spreading of the the spreading of the paint. Right. Just it's so this part's fun. This part's not serious, guys. This part is fun and silly and enjoyable. And it reminds us that taking the canvas from white to finished is not a scary thing. Um, I was introduced grounds through traditional painting process. Didn't use them initially on the show because they're kind of a fine art thing. And then realized that these would help beginners overcome some really difficult obstacles like covering a white canvas. <laughs> mm. So not only does it give you guys a better result on your finished painting, but it helps you get started. It's an interesting thing. So in traditional painting, what this does is give us a good glowing deep 
result with depth and a completed finished look to the painting. But as a beginner, you're like, at least I've started and I did this part good. And you're like, I painted the canvas yellow. I'm sure I got that one right. Oh and if you're goodness. sitting here not sure that you got that one right, I want to give you a hug and go, you did. It's yellow. If it's the yellow ochre color, you nailed it. And we're going to dry it, though, because it's pretty wet. And if I tried to paint right now, um, it would just be a mess, right? A lot of times when you're a beginner and you try to do this yourself, you don't know when the paint needs to be dry and when it needs to be wet for a technique. Okay. So, but this one, for the next thing to work, we got to dry it. So while she's doing that, I'm, uh, my goodness, I'm going to say thank you to Paige and Leslie. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys so much. Um, and, and thank you to all of you guys who, who get the likes, the comments, the subscribes, the, the hugs, the, the watches, the comments, the views, everything makes such a difference here. We're so, so lucky to have you guys as our community. Um, thank you. Thank you all guys. Just so much to to allow us to do this for you. It's um, something we super, super love doing. And uh, over, you know, we're just going to keep doing it. I mean, like, our, our, our life is, uh, is dedicated to doing this. And so it's one of the great pleasures that we have. Um, so thank you. Thank you for making it, uh, making it possible for us to do this together with you. Um, it's just uh, really amazing that we get to be a part of your guys' lives. Um, something we, we talk about and we take very seriously um, all the time. Uh, it, it just means so much that you guys allow us to, to be part of you guys learning about art because it's, a, it's something that you take with you for the rest of your life. And uh, it's, it's, it's really nice that uh, uh, we give you all. Oh, thank you, Heather. Gosh, guys, it's, you know, just always so floored by how your guys' generosity. It's, I, I, I can't say enough. Thank you. Um, Gotta find the button over here and, and turn it on. I can't see chat. I, I know. I, I'm trying to get the chat. Well, that's what I was over here fidgeting. That's why I was quiet. Oh, okay. Go, that is, is not going to be big enough. I'm going to have to free him a circle, John. Uh, do you have... Or need a dinner plate. I think you need that window. Okay, right, uh, I'll freehand it. But I would recommend a plate or something. I think. Need a new step. Oh, great. So All right. So I'm going to get a round brush. Uh, that way I can essentially draw and... I am going to look at my canvas. Now, I could put a dinner plate out here if I really felt like I was going to struggle to get a circle. There's two workaround methods. And by the way, it's okay to struggle to get a circle. Circles are actually kind of hard. Um, one method is to create a square the size that you want. And then you just make sure that your circle touches all four sides of the square. Yeah, that's okay. I've been made to disappear, but I'm still here doing things square. We see the square. We know the square. The square is there. All right. Then the other, uh, there's another really fun method where you uh, trace around something that's an approximate size. So if you took a dessert plate that didn't have a scalp edge, but was just rounded, you could trace around and get a perfect circle. So if you feel like I've got mobility issues or um, you're just circle challenged just on a general level, those are two ways. I recommend the dinner plate method or dessert plate. You just get it close enough in the canvas. But we're going to show you another method, which is I'm going to take a little bit of my red paint, living risky like I do. And I'm going to come over to the center left and I'm going to make a mark about an inch from the side. And then I'm going to come down to the bottom and maybe, oh, maybe a little further up, I'm going to make another little mark right about the third over on the surface. I'm going to come up to the top. It's going to be kind of similar up there. I need to give, I have to have space for my ornament to have a top and um, a string. So that's important to, that we do that. And so then I'm going to come over here into the middle and I'm going to measure that. Now, one thing that you can do is you can make sure that your ball is the same width across. So if I say I'm going to have a seven inch, then I can be like seven inches here. And then if I go like this and I do it at seven, I will have a completely nicely 
worked out little ball so that when I make my circle, it at least has good scale. And I'm going to make it kind of crazy at first. I'm going to show you my little weird method. And normally I wouldn't do this in paint. I'm doing this in paint so you guys can see it. You guys do this in chalk or use the traceable, which is provided for free and is not cheating, my friends. So you'll notice I just start to use light. I'm using water and paint, very like loose, so I can erase easily. You guys can see it, and I'm just sketching out the shape. And John will turn me on. Actually, if John could turn me off for a second. So one of the reasons this is a struggle for me is my position to the canvas. And if I can stand up and get over it. I can improve my ability to draw it. When you work flat or at a flat angle, what can happen is that you don't see the canvas in perspective. Yeah. And I took away her side view camera so I could give her chat. So, <laughs> you know, it, one of the things that I will say is that uh, in the next year or so, we're going to be resettling to a new place where we're going to build the studio sort of first, if it makes sense. We're going to, we've been sort of kind of going from place to place, kind of having to bounce around All righty. in our spaces and not prioritize where the studio is. So that means that right now we're working in a basement that has... You can see why I love the dinner plate method. Very low ceilings. Now there's a lot of adjustment that can still be made here, so don't feel weird about it. Sometimes when you do something that it's large, and right now it looks pointed, but that's because of these lines here. I have a oh, okay. good ability to see my outside contour, but the inner lines that I made can impact how I see it. Right, I see what you mean. Yeah, the outside is very roundy. Right, and then I'm going to come up here and I think I'm going to just remind myself that I've got a top. But it's narrower than that. I don't have to take it too far out because I'll be painting in later. This is really all I need to know. And the reason I do this is so that I don't do a lot of work. Where I'm going to put a big giant red ball, <laughs> right? Sometimes that happens to us as artists. We do a lot of work Yeah. where we're going to put in a big giant red ball. Yeah. And I'm just trying to yeah. prevent us from having to do that because we don't want to go through that at all. And now we're going to put in our background. Let's go on to step two. Two. Mm. The second step. Are you ready the for the second step? Give me more heat? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think. It, well, you know what? I am. No, I don't need to dry. I'm no, okay. I mean your coffee. Yes, I do. More heat. Okay. I'm going to get a oval mop. So this is a one inch oval mop by the Princeton Select line. It's a nice brush. But when you're doing acrylic, one of the things that's very hard to get is soft and diffused or out of focus effects because of the nature of acrylic. It's just very crisp and it likes to dry with hard edges. And so getting it where it's drying with soft edges can be a challenge. This brush and the round blender that I'm going to show you today are my workaround in, with the combination of the glazing medium. This is friendly for beginners. It's just you don't know it organically, which is cool because you're a beginner. You wouldn't just know everything about art the day you decided to be a painter. And so that's why I'm telling you. Now I'm going to take this round blender, not round blender, the oval mop, and I'm going to get a little bit of my burnt sienna glazing medium and Mars black into it. I want a dark kind of chocolatey brown color. And we're going to come back here in this corner with this mix. I'm going to go right up to the edge. It's okay if you go over because we can put our little round ball back. Easy to make it bigger, hard to make it smaller is what I'll tell you. I'm just blending and creating lots of soft, diffused, little blended effects. Sometimes when I want to be softer with uh, my paint, I can soften my brush pressure. That's how hard I'm pressing down through my shoulder, body, arm into my hand, creating weight into the canvas where it starts to press in brush pressure. 
as I am coming out, I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and cad yellow together and some glazing medium and come right here. Enjoy my, oh, so hot coffee now. So hot, my coffee. You know what? It's occurring to me. It's probably not sparked to store my coffee near my painting area where I'm using cadmium because that's a good way to ingest some cadmium. If I flake some paint this way, I'll have to talk to John about that. I'm sorry. I did a sing songy thing. Sometimes when I have a thought, I will sing song to myself because I'm just like, oh, wow. So I'm blending this out. It can uh, bias a little green to the eye in person. Um, and I tell you that because even the camera isn't going to pick up on that. That's something your human eye will see and the camera might not see. So I have a little green to it. It does. It's a little bit. You're okay. You're still okay. That was the black in your paint. That's all that was. And, you know, it makes a difference. John, I'm realizing that we're doing a dangerous thing here. Yes. And I need you to help me think of a way to fix it. My coffee cup is always near my paint palette. Yeah. When I flick my brush, I flick cadmium and that gets in the cup, I think. I've never seen it, but I can see that potential. So I think I'm going to sip this and we get them. I think we have to rethink our coffee position. I'm going to put it under my, ah, I can put it under, I got it. I put it under my table, covers it. Studio safety is a big thing, guys. Um, when you paint with uh, student paints, you don't got to worry about it so much. They kind of um, everything danger. Oh, fixing everything for a moment because I had to I had to redo this, guys. So I think that I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I think we had a power blip. I mean, it all went out. My entire... It was just blue screens everywhere. I was like, I'm not going to scream. It, I think that we're back. Yeah, it shows it back now. From outer but space. Give me just a moment here to finish catching our... Uh, putting the proper images back in here. Oh, yeah. while we're doing this, I want to give okay. my mom a shout out. I was talking to my mom this morning when I was doing my makeup and uh, my mom has a YouTube channel, Ginger Cook Live, uh, and she's uh, got a school and a bunch of her students get got some paintings. Mm. And so, but there's 40 now that they got. It like ended up being a bigger number, I think, than anybody expected. <laughs> and uh, so my mom is painting many days most days they're called fly on the wall story times and to just paint painting you're not allowed to duplicate it and it is only for the person who got it but you can watch her paint it and she'll tell stories hmm. and my mom has weird stories I, that let me do this better i'm going to start with my mom tells crazy stories that you won't believe huh. i'm not responsible for anything she says but I, I'm like, I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying it's funny and you might enjoy it. it. And if you need to just have something on, on the TV in the background, it might be something yeah. that you like. So I'm not sure what happened there, but yeah. I think that we're finally So back. that's my I shout out go. to my moms, my moms, my moms, and John Little. Hi, moms, and John I, Little. I think that we're now moving on to step three. All right. We're moving on to step three. Uh, let me ask my team here. Make sure. I should dry it. Okay, you go ahead and do that, and I'll ask. I'll dry it. <laughs> so, oh, gosh, that was a little bit crazy, guys. Sorry about that. Um, everything just, I think my machine just went bloop and kind of freaked out for a second. And I looked down, and it was not broadcasting, and it wasn't recording, and the little lights were blinking, and I was like, uh-oh. So I rebooted it all and turned it all back on, and... Uh, We'll be moving on here to our next step in just a moment. And, uh, oh, let's see here. I think I finally have the thing back. You ready for a step? I'm ready for a step. All right. So I've got my, uh, if you're wondering what this is, I really recommend these. Um, this is the Fabriano Multimedia 1264 pad. Um, I like these pages. They're actually perforated perfectly to tear out i'll do it on a page that i've already done so you can see this this is just a big deal so if i'm i can swatch on them i can test techniques on them i can practice ideas on it i can do full multimedia paintings like a multimedia multi-journal artist on it company 700 years old actually maybe even older um they're green, they're in Italy, they're amazing in every way. And I believe these are going, you're going to be seeing them more and more everywhere. These are going to be easier and easier to get in, 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 in. So more and more. 
the company has done a quality product at an economic price. I don't even want to call it student because it's not. It's a quality product. They just got the price down. Super quality price down. Very good archival, good product. Every single way. Nice to your pocketbook. That's my, my plug. By the way, I'm friends with them. Sometimes they send me paper. That's my bias. But they send me paper because I guess about their paper. So I don't really. It's a chicken egg scenario. But that's my bias. Now you know. I have a friendship and a relationship, and we're talking about a sponsorship in the future. So now you know where my biases are, but I really actually really like their paper. Okay, now I'm going to load my brush. I'm going to show you something. Same brush. We're just going to talk a little bit about these brush strokes that I'm doing, and I want you to see them on. Let me get let me get a blue. Maybe it'll show better. So here's the load. The load is very light. You almost can't even see it on the brush. When I go to do these little diffuse things. This is how it actually is coming out on the canvas. You can't really see it because sometimes this is a subtle color that is a shade lighter or darker than the one that we are doing, right? So we've got this here. You can kind of see there's a curve. It's very light and I nudge and I'm not, I'm not doing this, right? That was entertaining though. Do that again. Yeah. So I made some things. Right. That's a lot of brush pressure. If I'm going like this, I'm pressing too hard. Now, if I'm going like this, brush? I'm pressing too hard. That's what I mean. Now, isn't that going to mess up your brush? When you do well, like this is a synthetic and I, yeah, I, no, it's a good brush. You can bully that one. I can bully this brush pretty, pretty bad. But see how, how much less I'm pressing down on it. That is something that in the middle of it, when you're trying to think about how much is my load? Is this the correct color? How does this go on here again? What was her brush stroke? Where did she put it? When you're doing all of that, it is easy to forget how hard you're pressing down on the brush. Pressing too hard, it's going to get away from you. Mm. Let's continue on, my friend. Well, then carry on. I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow and yellow ochre again. And a little, a little white. Oh, yes. A little white. Little, little, little. And come to this corner, this upper corner, and start to kind of lighten it and gold it out a little bit. We're going to start putting the festive twinkle to the lights of everything 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 now i can also get a little red into the mix and that will warm it a lot of people are like oh like do you like your paintings warm or cool i do tend to bias towards a warmer painting that's me you got too much red in there so i'm adding a little more yellow Lazy medium. You see how that just has warmed it up just a little. We could have done a blue gray background and pulled the ornament out of that in that way. But I like the fact that these are harmonious next to each other on the color wheel colors. Because I think they're going to give us a very serene, peaceful painting, which is what we need right now. Grab a little bit of black. A little bit of brown again. And I'm going to begin to do my little blended strokes all around the ball. Little black, little brown, glazing medium if you need it. I do today. I can tell you that. I am having the best day, guys. The best? Okay. So if you follow my Facebook page, you saw my post about my kids recently. I, I have... Uh, a Facebook page page and I had a personal page and for a long time my personal page I shared stuff with family or about family or home life and everything but as the as we started to understand the internet more and the kids uh, got older and started to be able to talk about their experiences we realized that the kids hadn't really signed up for an online life right that's our business but that isn't their sign up and and they actually you know like more privacy and and they're starting to get super smart super smart and amazing about the internet in fact uh, i started hearing from each of them individually and they didn't influence each other about some type of social media cleanse because they felt like being online wasn't good for their mental health so i was just super gushing about that because i was just like man i'll just dig my kids all right i'm pulling this out here and you can see i'm lightening up my pressure and the amount of paint that's coming off of this just super proud and i got to go to a wrestling match um for my kids and i got to see them compete and it was so fun there was wrestling but i wasn't allowed to post any pictures which like killed me 
But I totally understand. And also because you could accidentally end up filming somebody else's kid yeah. and you're filming a kid, your own child for yourself, right? You don't want to put them online mm. without their consent. So it's a whole, it's multi-layered. But I am just gushing inside and it was super fun and I wish I could have taken you with me. I had the best day and watching little kids do real wrestling is all, is a hoot. Okay, I'm going to tell you right now, they's adorable. <laughs> Deadly, though. But adorable. <laughs> I'm going to continue to put out these little spots here. Thank you for allowing me to gush on my children. You have to visualize it. You can see that this starts to give us that patterned background, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This is how we can create very complicated details without making tons and tons of details. I can get a little red and yellow here into my brush as I go down. And you can see that it just warms that up. But the black is continuing to darken it, and we're just going to continue to. Fill up that depth. Fill up the depths of the world. I've got to get, uh, oh, wow, what, there was a 50, John. I missed it. I here. just looked up and saw that going. Let me grab a little more of my black and brown. Heather I C, was, thank you yeah, so much. That was from, there was Heather C. Oh, Leslie, Leslie K, thank you. And then before that, let's see, I can't, I think that there was one It more. doesn't, all, by the way, just so you guys know, if ever we miss uh, one of your very, very generous we, uh, I got, I uh, super chats, it does give me a dashboard at the end to tell me about them. So I do see, even if I don't see during the show. I was gushing on them earlier. So Okay, good. UG. We want to gush on it. I want this corner through here to be a little darker, right? So we're kind of creating a curl of darkness through here. And uh, we're doing that because it will make the contrast from this dark background to this brightly well-lit ball and the fact that everything is out of focus and this is in focus is going to create some dynamic interest in our image. You can see I'm just kind of pulling this here. I really love to use this for this type of technique. This brush really makes me happy for this because it does. Not that you can't get there some other way. You can. You absolutely can. Now I'm going to just take a little more black. And it's just black. And I'm kind of patterning out the same thing. Now I don't know how much the camera can pick it up. The human eye though, right? The human mm. eye will absolutely see it. What's that? This patterning of the black oh, yeah. and brown. Yeah, you can definitely see the modeling that takes place there. I think we've got a pretty good focus on it. Oh, I, I know you do. I can never tell because I got the monitor and the monitor does that thing you said through the glass, through oh, tinted glass. Yeah, it does. Now, I'm, I might have to put my ball back a little bit because I painted up into it, but I don't mind. I have its scale and that's the big thing. That's the hard thing to get. This is the most focused, out of focus painting I've ever done. Like, we're so focused on the <laughs> lack of focus. <laughs> but it's a good study in how we get to uh, out of focus paintings. Let us draw everything. Sip our sippy sippies. Mm -hmm. Smile our smile smiles. And come back to do the next step. Okay. Smile smiles. Sippy sippies. Sippy sippies. Ja ja. Ja ja num num sippy sippy. Woo! Ah, uh, so. Yeah, um, so as you guys may or may not know, if uh, YouTube has brought commercials into streaming, and uh, if you don't enable commercials at all, then there's no way for us to make any money on the free video. So uh, what we try to do is it gives us limited controls. It allows us to say when we can put a video but doesn't really let us say when we can't put uh, an, uh, a commercial. So we can say when we can, but not when we can't, really. But the way we can kind of work, push, you can set it so that there's a minimum time between commercials. So if we push the button at the drawing breaks, then it gives us at least, I think, eight to ten minutes before it puts another commercial in. So it, it, you know, that's why we try to at least time it so that you see them here and they don't take away from your lesson learning. Um, I'm going to mute and cough for a second. So sorry about that. You guys okay. ready for your yeah. next step? Another one of my favorite brushes out. This is the number 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. I did send it out in the newsletter. Um, and again, yes, I have it in my store. But know that it's, Princeton is a big international brush company. So you can find this where you live. So it's the number 12 Round Blender. 
And we're going to be doing little kind of soft circles. And they might be small and they might be bigger. And we may have them be lighter. And they're going to be a very light. See the light? You can't even see the paint on the brush is the thing. And that's, that's what I'm trying to talk is like that we're going to be able to go from like these centers, which are a little more focused and then come out. But even in that, you don't really see the paint on the brush. So that's the thing. That's Instead of doing bokeh pouncers, that's how we're going to get these sort of uh, canvas. It's going to be awesome. So let's get a little white in here. I'm going to come up to my mixture from earlier. And maybe get a little more yellow into it. And I'm going to begin to kind of almost like mosaic or tile. I realize something. There's something I can do. I don't know if I should do. So I'm thinking about the order of operations. When do I paint something and how do I paint something? Do I want to do the whole thing and then come back with the out of focus branches? Or do I want to, what's happening over here? I have basically an orange and then I have a cad yellow and a yellow ochre. And then down here, I burn sienna and Mars black. So that those are the colors that we're sort of dancing through. And sometimes we get into white. So if I go there. Get a little black involved. But you can see even this creates even more of an out of focus diffused effect. Can we get up on it close? I don't know if we can see it. It's so it's small right now and we've got to keep building it up. You know, sometimes I want to make little circles too. So not just, you know, pattern shapes, but also little light. And then as I come here, I can be a little bigger with my patches, with my oval mop. Let's see how that just starts to put it out of focus. Round. This is the 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. Um, Uh, what did Angela Pyle ask? And was well, asking for sure giving them to your family is super okay. Yes. But in sales for mechanical uh, reproductions, that's when you make prints. Um, you just have to get a license from us specifically. Yeah, and it, what I was basically saying if is we don't do that, Amazon steals everything from us. We're and not trying to mess with you guys ever. We're not trying to make your lives harder. It is literally about just making it a little harder for the people on Amazon to steal from it. So you just got to get a license. So, Angel, if you want to email support at theartsherpa.com, we can kind of go into some details of that stuff with you. But uh... come get a little more yellow. Isn't that funny? Add a little, little brighter highlights, and then you start to really see the twinkle. That's a little bright, so I go back into the yellow, and I kind of push that back. Yeah, there is a bunch of buffering going on here today, guys. I have noticed that. You know, since since we've been here, I think we need some internet hardening, or I don't know. Well, this isn't the best location for technical streaming stuff. Like, once we get to another location, we'll get fiber. and Now a little yellow ochre and my burnt sienna. See how that just creates just a little more of that detail. I'm going to rinse that, put that aside. Is it, was it spider? <laughs> I was thinking it might be. And I'm going to make my job a little bit easier for a second. And I'm going to get one of my favorites, my number 18 Raphael D'Artany brush involved. And you can go ahead and give us a new step, John, since we're changing brushes and techniques. And I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of my burnt sienna and my Mars black. It should get a little bit better now. I think we've done some changes here. That might help. Now, it could be just the internet. So, you know, if you guys rewind, if you guys just basically hit pause, give it about a 10 second lead and then hit play, 
you'll probably be buffer it'll probably be okay and you'll just be about 10 seconds behind the live um, that just it, it allows you to create a larger buffer of your own now through here is some slightly more light rust but i want to give it uh the depth that needs to really 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 show sometimes contrast is what we need to have for things to show so i'm gonna take a little bit of my cad red and cad yellow but i haven't rinsed my brush and i'm going to make these little shapes it's really i'm working the brush from the mid belly to the toe and these are the kind of shapes that i'm making that's the work that i'm doing i know that's silly but sometimes if you can see it on the white paper it gives you a, a context that's different than the canvas that helps you kind of pull it out now a little more yellow a little more brown we want it to be deeper in our color ranges here a little this deeper in her color that sort of so so that. how that okay so it's really funny how this ended up being an our lexicon on youtube because yeah. i was there when it happened it literally went down to where a lot of somebody's like how do you do that lens effect it sounds like bokeh <laughs> you're like <laughs> bokeh and i'm like yeah let's teach bokeh effect <laughs> just sort of went <laughs> and then i was like oh round pouncers work for that really well and i grabbed the martha stewart ones and then i developed my own line and then all of a sudden the whole world's like bokeh 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 <laughs> But it is technically a lens effect in photography. And to all the photographers, I'm a little sorry, guys. It's a good way to describe it. And it's how most people are um, familiar with it is that out, that out of focus look that cameras create for depth of field, right? Now, our eyes actually have a pretty intense depth of field if our vision is working well. And um, so this is something that you actually do see more in camera lens there's there's some styles or or depths of feel that we see now in art that don't actually exist in our human eye it, it exists uh to a mechanical eye isn't that kind of cool and then we reproduce cool. it in our art and then our human brain thinks that's what our human eye saw but it never saw that like at all <laughs> it's kind of cool just making that dark can you see how we're just getting some wealth of richness down here yeah and by using these scruffly little brushes and these diffusing techniques we create the sense that things are not in focus and that is fantastic Just deepening that up so the red ball shows real good. All right, let's uh, rinse out our brush, dry it off with the towel, call that a step. I do want to dry only because I don't want to drag a color that might still be wet right. into the color I'm doing because it could give me an unexpected result, and I don't want that at this stage. Yeah. Get my air dryer. <laughs> All right, guys. So if you need any of the resources that we have, they are available on our website. Uh, you can find that at theartsherpa.com. We also have a store there. There should be links in the descriptions down below. Um, and uh, yeah, that's a, there's lots of cool stuff there that you can get access to, from the calendar that helps you find all of the projects, to traceables, reference photos, uh, information on our patronage. Um, the easiest way to find us is on Patreon. Um, you know, the Art Sherpa is there. You can find us. And uh, we also have it on our website. If you're one of our original patrons that was in the website, those still work. Uh, yeah. If you're a patron so, of the website, all your stuff still works. You don't have to change. You don't have to go yeah. over to Patreon. But uh, if you decide to, then just email support at theartsherpa.com and they'll help you. Doesn't... Support at theartsherpa.com. And if you're not hearing back from us, there is some, some like error, a technical thing, technical thing not because, us ignoring you yeah, ever. We have, we have team that check them every, every day. day. Yeah. So if there's, <laughs> every if day. Yeah, if you're not hearing something, say something to somebody in yeah, chat. Yeah, it's so we'll okay. It's okay. 
Yeah, we're here. So let's get yeah. you another step. Please say something. Yeah, let's give you another step. Now, I'm going to put out a little Burt Sienna kind of closer to my black because I'm going to be working a lot of these colors down here. And I just want to have it close by. I'm going to take, this is a number zero de brush, de brush uh, by Raphael. It's kind of got a round blender on one side and a filbert. If you don't, I'm going to show you real quick the brush stroke. We're going to do it with a couple brushes. And then that way, if you don't have this brush, you're okay. I'm going to take it and I'm going to load a little bit of my phthalo green and burn sienna. I'm going to come forward. You kind of do like a straight line. And then I start to flick out the shape of the branch. And you'll notice that it's very out of focus, right? Actually, I may even change brushes doing this little test thing, right? And then we're going to come and add more. Let's do it with, um, let's do this brush stroke with a round brush. Let's find a hog round. I got one here. So this is a uh, number four Raphael Artney brush round. Get it wet. And I always wipe my rounds off with a towel. You don't see it's always, always, never not because that water drop is there. Ooh, I might like this better. So this one, I will just go ahead and kind of, oh yeah, I do, a little more controlled. See how we're doing our pine branch, but instead of wanting uh, nice crisp little lines for our branches, we want these diffused lines because that's what's going to make it all seem out of focus. I think I am going to do this, guys. I thought I was going to do my D, but I think this looks too cattaily, and I feel like I like this much better for my technique. So. I'm changing technique brushes. That happens. That's why it's nice to have this rain. Pat practice it and be like, which brush do I want to use? Oh, I like that brush. Okay, so first we're going to come up here and we're going to grab a little bit of our green and brown together. And across here, I'm going to, as light as I can, kind of almost a dry brush. See how this is just a very light little brush stroke? Maybe if I show you again on the white. So I'm coming here and I'm just going. That's what I'm doing. They're really light little brush strokes. Okay. So there was a really good question hmm. earlier about, uh, or an idea, I think it was Angela was saying, she was thinking about painting um, the acrylic April on cardstock. Oh, that's totally doable. And, uh, and so I had suggested uh, the Fabriano uh, prepare paper for acrylic video to uh help get them get them to help them prepare yeah and the... actually i would also suggest if you're if you're gonna do it yeah prepare paper for that and um you know make sure that you've got a good stretching board and all of that uh, uh, so cool. that your paper doesn't wrinkle and wobble in the painting process because if it's not already stretched on a block then you'll need to stretch it for each individual paintings and that just basically means to prevent that warping and wobbling that happens in paper when it gets uh wet now you'll notice that these dark ones are pretty light and they're just sort of sketched out here, aren't they? Uh, sketching those in and we do these a little out of focus because you know it, it is it's it, it's our depth of field is really focused on this little Christmas ball I'm going down here on an angle babe
Okay. I'm going to put a few of them down here, even though I know I'm going to come back with more of the snow and the grays. And I don't need to worry about them too much back here. I'm going to rinse that out. And I'm going to go ahead and get maybe a little bit of my cad yellow into this green. A little more gold into it, a little more yellow ochre. So it's a lot brighter now. And then we'll get a little white into it. I'm just looking that out there. I won't take this light color too far back because even into the white white. Oh, yay! Did we have a bunch of people in chat to come join us? Mm -mm, with me. I love it. I'm going to add a little more white. Placing that down. Isn't that fun? So fun, so fun. And then every once in a while, if you get a little green gold in that, it just makes some nice variance. You know, you won't be sorry that you have it. Oh boy. Barely any of this back here, unfortunately. I have to do most of that in snow, but I'll put a few hints of it just so that it feels like, you know, dry brushing a little bit right there. Trying to say, oh, there's some little greens out here. All right, I'm going to go back into my dark, dark green. Make sure that this little branch up here is just a little weightier than I had originally done it. Now let's call this a step. And I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue over to my burnt sienna. I'll make a gray, add a little white to it. Still same brush. I put a little bit of the flocking or snow. It's however you want to think of it. This is definitely a blue gray. You could do a brown gray. I think I'm going to do brute blue gray. I'm just putting little bits of uh, like flocking or highlights or snowflakes. It's kind of fun. You know, while you're here with the snow, playing with the snow. How's everybody feeling today? Well, I think everybody's feeling pretty creative. I'm feeling pretty creative, too. Don't forget to be calm and remember that critic, that inner critic that you've been allowing to ride shotgun your whole life. Don't invite them to the paint party. They don't help. I know sometimes that inner critic does get you to go 10 more minutes to the aerobics class or whatever. They can be useful. I have a, a, a kind of a Gen X get up in the morning that I can't say because it uses the F word too many times. But, you know, it's really like, oh, get up, you. Mm. It's kind of like, <laughs> kind of like stripes. It's like the get up, good morning thing. And uh, that's okay for there. But you don't want that person in your painting. Look at that. So we're just building up that out of focus color of the snow. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I can go a little more brown anytime. time. 
And you'll see that because the brush is just not tight, the brush stroke is loose. And it is the loose brush, brush stroke that we're trying to encourage. This one down here can be a little messier. No, a lot more brown. I'm going to come back here to this upper corner. Try to dry brush out. It's kind of like a implied little branch. And by dry brushing it, that's a technique that keeps it from feeling like it's in focus. See how the center of the line is more in focus. And that just helps us see. Little, you got to be overhead, babe. Hmm? I'm liking the side view to see that. Ah, so it doesn't dry out on me. I don't want it to dry out on me. I don't want white, white, though. It's lighter. It will feel much, much, much lighter. But again, we have to avoid white, white. Because we need to leave room for highlights to create these out of focus effects because we won't be able to get there if we don't do that. So I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just come and put some of these little. And then every once in a while you can add some out of focus little brush stroke of like little balls of light that could be. Just pulling this down through. And again, I love using the glazing mean because it slows down the drying time of the paint. Look at that go. It's sort of fun. It is. I think that's what's, you know, always so enjoyable and surprising is how fun the whole thing is. I'm adding these little white spots. They're kind of like little snowflakes or little snow dust glitter. Yeah. And I think that they're worth adding. Background snow. They're just placed very thoughtfully. Just have a different look. We're going to just brush out over the tops of these. And we're going to be okay. So we're at the top of the branch. Because that's where the light would be. That's something to think about when you're new at painting. Is where is the light? Because that's how we see everything. We don't really paint... What we can't see, we don't paint the air, we don't paint the shadows, the colors. I hope you guys are liking this winter They're wonder se season. Very much liking this. I have been having a lot of fun. Yes, I'm super excited about the horse and snow, but you know what I'm most excited about? What? The kids playing in the snow, the brother and sister, or two best friends playing in the snow. I mean, any two kids uh, ever. It's just, <laughs> I'm so excited to do it. I'm so nervous about it. It's such a challenge to myself to try to teach that live because little faces and figures. Ah! Angela, <laughs> such genres, so relaxing. Um, dude, but it is, right? Oh. There is this channel. Okay, John's going to laugh at me for recommending it to you guys. I will put a little more white up here. So I have slightly a lighter little white I can play with too. Um, and uh, Honey found it. 
uh, initially they it's kind of a little bit videos and i just find my brain is oh some things just scratch that part of your brain painting christmas scenes weird little baby videos it's just strange i'm making kind of almost circles The other way we can make them later is um, also with glaze. And that's a fun thing, too. Oh, we'll yeah. Leave some room for that. More brown. So more brown as I come back and I add the little the little kind of flakes of snow and little touches of things. Little dry brushed out of focus bokeh circles as you do. These are a little more in the browns. They're kind of creating those little out of focus effects. I think that we have this back. Um, give me just a moment. We're getting cinnamon back here. And uh, then we'll we'll have this whole thing going. What's happening here is something is going wrong with my broadcaster on this end, and I I'm not sure what we're gonna have to after the show here do a little little work on the machine, but uh, something something's not going well here. I may have to rebuild my broadcaster and find out what's a what is a foot. But we'll get it back here. It may just take a little bit of adjustments here and there. And, uh, let's see here, I'm gonna have to. Get all this going. Got to put my little images back, and we'll have we'll be back to the broadcast in just a second. Just bear with me while I get all the little buttons pushed, and Cinnamon will be back in here in just a moment. And doo 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 doo. See if my buttons are working. Yep, they are. Okay, good. So it's not material step. That's not what we're doing. You don't see cinnamon. Yep, she's not. She's not here yet. She'll be here in a second. We're getting. We're getting this. Getting this all working. She'll be down here momentarily. While I was rebooting all of this, she went and did the coffee checking on things. Okay, and uh, so here she comes. It was there not an come. option. It worked out well. We worked out well. So it worked let's out see well. Here. Hi. Now I teach art here. Want to learn? We're gonna go on participating. to step seven. And see if this works. Okay, we got the recording going. I'm going to hit step seven. All right. And we're now, gonna see what now we're here's gonna what's do. funny. You're going to have to make me vanish. Make you vanish. Hold on yeah, a second. because I got to paint in the ball and I got to make sure it's Oh, bad. right. So, so let me I'm do stand this. up. So let me stand, stand up, up so I have a better view. Stand up. And I'm taking a half inch you angle brush. You have to mind brush. your lean in over the top so you're not hitting the camera above you. There you go. I'm taking Doc's purple. <laughs> and my cad red and i'm going to start to very carefully sketch in my christmas ball Doc's purple and cad red gives me kind of a nice burgundy color, Merlot color, and I really like it.
Again, I'm standing so I can see scale because my artwork is flat. If I were in an easel, I would already be seeing that. That's why artist painting is an easel is the view. So you can see I just fill it out slowly. I'm not making big moves. Big moves. You don't make big moves. Little moves. Small incremental growths or increases or adjustments will keep it from getting away from you. And again, if you needed to, you could get that dinner plate right back out and retrace it. And I have been known to do that. So since this is a seven inch by seven inch basic kind of circle, it's probably a dessert plate. I think it would look as good eight by eight inches. I think six by six would be a little small. Because to get a steady line, we have a tendency to hold our breath to steady. Don't forget to breathe after a concentration line like that. Good deep one, too. Now, at some point, for the purposes of us all being able to go on with our lives after this painting, I will have to make a decision that it is round enough. <laughs> and then I'm going to come right up here. I may be able to sit down again now that I've got the circle set. And I'm going to bring one center line kind of up. Rinsing out. I can be back, I think, John. I'm going to come here with a little bit of black and brown. And interestingly enough, glazing medium. And what we're going to do is we're going to just crisp up. Just make sure that that looks nice and You'll notice that I am diffusing this line, breaking it up so that it's part of the model background. That will help. Now we have a nice seated red ball. Let's dry everything. Woo, that was some work, wasn't it? That Stream was. went out. Let's when I had, had to, to make stand sure stand up. It was a thing. Have to. Man, I'm I'm super nervous that my machine's just gonna go bloop and disappear on me again. It's not been having at the best time. So we're though we're getting to a place where my studio is a little long in the tooth and I need to rebuild a new one soon. Man, I, it's like I, your studio gets a year old and stuff starts to break. Cables start to break. you got to take it all apart and rebuild it. Not to mention I've hauled this one across the country a couple times. Rebuilt it in a couple of people's living rooms. So, you know, it's taken some abuse. Let's see here. Let me get her back on here and give you guys another step. Step eight. Let's use our little noggins for a second. So we've got a ball. We know our light is kind of coming in at this angle. We know that because there's the brightest highlights in the ball are forward. But you'll notice at the bottom, there's also some reflected light from the right center and from the right bottom. Um, and we can tell that there isn't a lot coming in from the lower bottom left. Hold but there's a, a little bit of highlight that's a bit of snow and a bit of highlight in the upper left. 
And so, and then there's a curve of shadow coming across the ball. Just so you can see it, and then I can make it go away. Is that blue? Can you see the blue? So it's, it's like this. That's the shadows kind of come through at this kind of an angle. So that's what you're sort of thinking. I'm going to get my purple and my cad red. And I'm going to very loosely with my angle brush kind of come through here and make sure that this sort of shaded curve of ball is deep in there. And I'll even take it further. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I just like, for some reason, almost lost my brush. You know what it is? It's my paper towel. I have a paper towel tucked next to my palette and it keeps blocking my view to my paint and I'm trying to look around it and I just catch myself doing weird little adjustments in a painting to get around a problem that I honestly shouldn't be trying to get around. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my red and my yellow together. I'm going to get a bit of an orange. And if I take a little uh, purple into that orange, it grays it just enough. See it like we put that highlight in and then it's like, what? How already is that an improvement? This line is slightly tapered at the ends and gets a little thicker at the middle and then tapers again at the ends. And then I'm going to brush up and you'll notice that there's a curve. <gasps> you know what I need to do after I do this? I'm going to explain. I'm going to do like I did the snowman faces. I'm going to explain the perspective. And you'll notice that when I'm stroking the brush stroke over here, if you imagine this is divided as an equator, the brush strokes here on the right at the upper will curve towards the right. And then down here, they're going to curve towards the lower right corner. Go back, we will get more into reds because it's tied towards the shade, shaded side of the ball. So now we're already starting to get. It's amazing. It just goes in so fast. Little red, little yellow. <laughs> Gonna grab a little more red. And just above it, it again, this is the curve. Now another mix I can make is my quinacridone and my cad red. And this is really good when I want to have a vibrant red over on the shadow side. It's just a cool thing that we can do to, you know, create brightness. And also this is a, oh, that's a little more than I wanted to use. And I can get some purple in there or blend it out. So even in our shadow, there's little cad red quinacridone mix gives you those little lights in the shadows that just really make your stuff feel more real. And then if I layer in some red with it. Wow, right? Some pure cad red. Sometimes that is a lot about pigment and understanding how pigments hit the eye. CAD is a very specific pigment. The reason why artists burden ourselves with it is that it does some very luminous, awesome things that we like. Mm, I'm loving it. It curved. Look at that. Oh. It did. It looks so nice. Oh. Okay. Let's dry everything okay and come back and we're gonna do something real quick do something real quick okay dry everything everyone take a little dry make sure you thoroughly dry this so that the next layer. um sorry about all the weird buffering today i've been seeing it happen but it should be okay on the replay um if you're having trouble watching you can just rewind a little bit give a little buffer space and it'll it'll do okay but uh we're getting through here Oh, I want to say hi a to Painting Angel and Gay Spangler and Mary Edwards and Virgo and Amy Grace Porter, who I hear did reach out to my good friend, Tanya. And they continue to add some layering. All right, and let's give you another step then. Yeah. I'm going to add a little more yellow into my little orange mix over here. Just a little more.
And this is more actually equality. You will sometimes see reflections that are happening. Let me go ahead and put just a little bit of this at the bottom. and add a few spots. I kind of like to take the corner of my brush and be like, woo, it's fun and it makes some playful stuff. Now a little hotter. See how that brightened right up? Brighten right up. And that just tells us that there are some bulbs around and put it there just a little bit. We've got a lot of snow and everything that's coming around this, but that will just absolutely help us with that look of the glow. Let's go over. It's so nice. <sighs> oh, coffee, great coffee. Thank you for your java bean. Sometimes me and my coffee have a moment. <laughs> I really appreciate its existence. Uh, Miss Tammy K, Missy Tammy K says, this is coming out more beautiful than I expected. And Amy Ovard is now threatening the internet. Listen here, <laughs> stupid internet. Get with it and let I us watch know. our Sherpa. Dang it. I, I love how even when we cuss and get mad, we're like, and listen up. I acknowledge your right to exist, but not to exist. And not let me watch my painting video. Urgh. But you do have a right to exist, internet. <laughs> It's like, it's how we are. Like, we're a kind community. I'm going to take a little bit of my, uh, interestingly enough, my Mars Black and my Burnt Sienna. They're going to be a fun run. Give you the next step. Yeah, let's do another step. I'm going to come here and think about my cap a bit, which is going to be a little dark for you guys to read at first, and then it will get better. I think initially what I'm going to do is create the cap and then create the flagging on the cap with my red. It'll be a negative space painting. And I think that's going to make what is a hard task significantly easier. You know, then we need a little loop over the top, a little loop. Hard to see, I know. And then the ribbon, which comes off. If I go into my yellow ochre with my brush, even this dirty, I'll just work it in. See how it kind of like dirties up the ochre. Then come to the top of the bulb, kind of blending wet into wet, starting to reveal. We'll shade the inside here and outside there. And what's really kind of fun is that like this we're going to see from the reflections more than anything. It's going to be super fun. Now that needs to have a dry, but we don't need to make another step. What we're going to do is we're going to... Not another step? Keep, just keep stepping? We're going to just keep going because we've got some little... Oh, Susie! Mason, thank you! Cinnamon and John, uh, as always, loving this and always love how you create such a wonderful community for us as well. Thank you. You know, you guys too. You've made a beautiful community for me. I know I'm having a wonderful experience online. Not every creator is. I am. And I'm very grateful for it. <laughs> so thank you. I'm going to take a little bit of my cad yellow and I'm going to work it into my round blender and I'm going to add some white and glazing medium. And I'm going to come right here. Oh, wow. Thank you, Susie. And I'm going to make some dots. And we can go into the orange more sometimes. It's all good. Yeah, you know, like it starts to layer in things too. I'm gonna make a bigger one here.
Okay, and that lets this all have a rest while we're still working out some of our little light effects. Little half bulb. And then sometimes I can come in on one that was like light, but I can make it kind of lighter in the center. Creating kind of a hot spot. Oh, I like that a lot. That's looking quite good. A little orange. There we go. Oh, I like that. Okay. Now I do want to dry everything and we'll come back and we are so close to I done. I know it's looking I so am good. Like feeling it. This is very, very close. Very, very close. I'm looking over here and seeing all of our friends in chat. Very lovely to see. Yeah, Amy, it's a good idea to stand up and sit back down. Stand up and sit down. It's good to stretch. Uh, and Mary, sorry about your shoulder. You know, it sucks. Getting older, parts yeah. fall apart. Don't work as good. Oh, my goodness. Though I will say physical therapy is my favorite thing ever. Mm -hmm. It really helps oh, with my shoulder. and you had missed here just a minute ago with uh, Susie. Oh, I saw Susie. Okay, just to make sure. But thank you again, Susie. All right, so I've got my round again. This is my number six Raphael Sepia. I really like this round um, a lot. I had a round that I did in my Art Sherpa line I really loved, and I really, really like this one in that same kind of way. I just like the point, and I like the spring, and it's a very well-behaved little thing. Now I'm going to take my yellow ochre here. Kind of go over... Well, hmm. Up over the top again, the front. Trying to get a little more color on this so we can get that metal effect. You know the metal effect. Did you hear highlight metal? Metal really will be a play of all the ochres. You get the metal from its reflections. I'm going to come into my orange a little bit here. I have a lot of orange and yellow in my metal. You think, I, I totally understand why sometimes as a student you would think that just getting uh, gold paint would make this easier, but it just all it ever looks like is flat metal. <laughs> Never looks good, so. You go ahead and add a little orange into that and a little bit of my yellow there. And then at the top here, so towards the back, I think I'm going to go more orange. And get a little bit of my brown. And it's really towards this middle. So what will happen is the back of this will be darker and the front of this will be lighter. I will get the pattern through here, but the trick is getting this set first. I'm going to go ahead and get a little purple involved. Notice that I'm kind of working my brush into my purple. And I'm going to just make sure that this half and that the top, this top edge is lighter. So I'm not going to take this dark color all the way to the top. I'm going to leave that little edge right there. Go ahead and get a little more purple on here. Just making sure that those lines look good. Rinse, rinse, rinse. Now towards the front, I'm going to go ahead and get a little more of my yellow and my yellow ochre involved. They're mixed together, but I'm still working in that area I was working earlier. And then if I come here, I can kind of get a half tone between my uh, purple and my yellow and kind of make sure that my middle range of this is a little bit half toned. And then we're going to want much brighter 
highlights towards front. So I'm going to get a little of my white here. And then, of course, at the top, a little more white into my yellow. So you're stroking that. It doesn't take a lot to make a lot of effect. I'm going to come here and I've got some very light color and I'm going to come towards this lower end of this. Just adding a little bit right there. And then I'm going to come to this outer top and I'm going to add a little bit up here. And if that doesn't pop you the best metal ring you've done in your life, I don't know what will. <laughs> little fine highlight on the ribbon. Kind of a little fine highlight on the ribbon outside. And I haven't done um, the inner patterning yet, but I will. Okay. Now, this part can be challenging for me, and I'm actually going to come in, interestingly enough, with a little bit of black and quin magenta. Fun trick. It's a great way to get a shadow when I've got red. And I don't want to lose my red. Making a little triangle. And then when I have that really good, I can come in with some black. And I will kind of round these lines a little bit and they will sort of also have a bit of a bend to the side of the canvas that they're on. All right. Then I'm going to just a little bit of a shadow. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to get a little bit of my yellow on here. And it's just, I'm going to make sure that there's that kind of little gold there. So the ribbon has a little better punchy punch to it. Rinse out. All right. Now we're going to get a little bit of our, I'm, I may even, because we might, we're going to splatter it. Then I'm going to get a little of my titanium white fluid acrylic. This is an acrylic paint that is put into a medium that isn't heavy bodied. It's liquid. It's more like a pancake batter consistency it's very self-leveling it's very smooth it's highly pigmented um, similar in consistency to craft bottle paint i like it it makes my life easier i'm going to use it here you don't have to you could just thin your white acrylic with water and get there but i'm not going to do that i'm going to just get this as fine of a point as i can over to my yellow I'm going to come here and I'm going to, as carefully as I can, I'll make a dot and a dot. And so I'm going to try to get that ornament pattern. A little highlight out here, a little highlight on the outer edge. And then also we've got some center of the ribbon. Just a few highlights here and there so that our cap seems like super good all right let's dry everything and then let's add some snow gonna dry it and add snow oh, gonna this is gonna oh man it's just 
I like the, the little the little details she did there, right there on those little things. I think they turned out really nice. I like those when we get to do all the little de detaily bits. It really kind of makes it come together. So, yeah, thank you guys for for hanging out while uh, we've had all of the weird, weird, um, uh, like YouTubery internet outages stuff. It's been it's been a bit of a thing today. It's so been a bit of a thing today. You guys, bearing with us. Bearing with us. Now is the next the final the twelfth. Final. I think this is step twelfth step. We finish on the twelve steps. All right. So I've got my round blender back out again, and I'm gonna get back into my gray blue snowy color. So that was my ultramarine blue and a little burnt sienna and my titanium white. I'm using my round blender, and I want a slightly off white color to start. I'm going to try to use the texture of this brush to help me make it feel like my bulb has snow on it. Snowy bulb. It's got a snowy bulb. Just very carefully, kind of just going back and forth super lightly. Just because again, it's easy to add, hard to take away, right? Mm -hmm. I'm I am making sure that my bulb, that my even my brush here, is still paying attention to the directionality. I don't want to take all of that out because that was some hard work. Go on the sort of toe of the brush and snow a little bit, right? Out on the bulb. Light touch with this. That's how I'm getting there. Light touch is very good. You always a light touch. You will feel like it's delicate snowflakes drop down on Christmas morning. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was weird. I gotta whisper louder. Here my, 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 my mic it's cut too off. Quiet. <laughs> it's the I have I have the mic set off so it cuts off real low sound so like you can't hear the kids, you know, debating heavily over who touched the door last upstairs while we're live. Really? <laughs> who knows? Okay. All right. They're uh, up there, you know. They're working it out. They're learning how. They're learning how to do it. All right. We're adding a little more white to the color now. I might have to clean up that little boo-boo there, but I'm okay. That's a little line. It's just a little pile of snow. A pile of snow. It's true. It's true, but I do like it cleaner, and it's going to bug me to deaths. To deaths. <laughs> so, can't do it. I may get my round brush involved just to... Um, Taper that a little better if you see what I'm saying. Where it's thicker and then it gets finer and finer until it intrinsically vanishes.
One of the fun things is you can keep building up into pure white and you will be able to see the pure white and it will make it feel dimensional. So if the, the snow that I put out has two to three values, when I put out highlights, it just, even without just making the paint thick, it feels like it's laid on there in dimensionality. Thank, Thank you, you so very much, much guys. Mary. Appreciate your guys' support so much. Oh, Mary Chanel, thank you so much. <sighs> uh, Miss Tammy Kay is like, just a final detail. I'll news when I need to. All right, tomorrow uh, we do have the finish of the patron Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, if you're a patron and you're having any trouble figuring any of it out, write us support at the email or chirpa.com. If you're not hearing back from us, there's some, there's some technical challenge on the website. And um, you can even come in and message us on a live stream and say, hey, I'm having trouble. And then we'll, we'll try to get it hooked up. Um, we've got team on that constantly. I've got uh, it set up on a free trial over on Patreon if you want to try it. Um, and but you don't. It, uh, and if you want to just like, I don't want to even sign up and try a free trial over on Patreon. If you email us, I don't mind us setting up our own. Like, we'll let you try at a time. Mm. I don't mind. I, I, to, do the, to do the stuff, I want you to love it. To be a patron, I want you to love it. So I don't mind you going out and checking it out and seeing it. Because we couldn't do this without the support. I mean, like, people coming to the live stream, sharing the shows, making the nice comments. We couldn't do it without your support at all. Yeah. And we so appreciate it. So we do want you to be able to enjoy. Enjoy. Your patronage and your Zoom. And uh, the learning how to do foil is going to be fun. And I've got... At least two, potentially three foil um, base projects. So once you invest in it, at least we'll use up the pack. Mm. And you're going to love the gold foil for New Year. Now, in the lightest way possible, I am going to finish this off with the mildest splatter of Ooh. white flake. Is so I've got a little toothbrush here. I'm going to put it in my little more fluid white paint. And I'm going to add just a little smattering of splatter. And that's it. It's light. And then I might come in here and splatter close just a little bit in this focused area. But only because I really, really will like the look. When everything is all done. When it's all said and done. And we've had our fun. And there's only one thing left to do, my friend. So if this was fun and you want to see me tomorrow and you want to see the Zoom class. Um... Now, if you're on our, if you joined our patronage from our website and you're supporting, and I think it's fifteen dollars or above, you'll automatically get a newsletter with the link and all that information. Um, everybody in the patronage gets the replay, so if you like a design, you'll get to see both lessons on the replay. Um, I am doing art coaching now, and I'm doing art business coaching, which actually I just saw a lady on Etsy. I wish, I wish with all my heart, I could have art business coached her because I could have like turned the whole thing around. And I was like, oh, I can fix all this. You're okay. Yeah, we can take on Disney. It's hard. It's scary. But I know how. <laughs> so it's just kind of a thing. So that's going on over there. Um, I've got watercolor coming up. I've got oil pastel coming up here on the main channel. I've got more acrylic coming up. We've got more art challenges where you pick it, I paint it. We've got some fun stuff coming up into the new year. And I we're, we're going to... We're really thinking hard about doing a Christmas show um, for our community members that might be um, uh, separated from family or away from home this year. You know, our family, our community members that are in the military or deployed or just right now, you maybe know, you're just, at a job and you're not in your family or just find yourself 
not we're 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 actually probably thinking about um we just love this. We love we spending wanna, community time We want to give back to you guys. And the kids want to give back to you guys. We all had a family meeting. Minutes. We're, mm-hmm. we're talking about doing a Christmas show this year. So watch for that. If we if we do, we will announce it. But if you're a person that would need that, keep You'll an have, eye out for You that. know what they'll get to find out about on the Christmas special? Mm. Cheesemas. We'll tell them about Cheesemas. On the first day of Cheesemas, <laughs> my father gave to me. <laughs> they'll have to understand what Cheesemas is. Cheddar. <laughs> it was a... It was... It was no. It was what was it? It was um, <laughs> mature cheddar. Mature cheddar. <laughs> so yes, we will. We will be together, and we just love you guys so much. And thank you for everything. I hope you're doing great. I hope you love your painting. If you are painting these for personal Christmas cards that you were sending to your family members, uh, <laughs> that's totally fine. That is not part. You have my consent to give yeah. these as Christmas cards to your family. If you're wanting to sell anything, just get a license, and that way we can keep Amazon from being a problem. We don't want to help Jeff Bezos out. He's doing well. Yeah. Let's let that man shine his own light, and we'll get our own star. Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.